Hello, everyone, and welcome to another short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messi, and well, it happened again. I was browsing through an antique sale when I came across yet another version of the Viewmaster. So now that I have five models in my collection, I am forced to admit that through no prior intention of my own, I am now officially a Viewmaster collector. So let's actually have a quick look at what it is I found. So this is a Viewmaster Model B, and as the name implies, this was the second model to be introduced onto the market. The first model, the Model A, was first manufactured in 1938 and made its public debut at the 1939 New York World's Fair. Now, unlike later, more iconic models, such as the Model C and later, which have rectangular bodies and load the film reel through a slot in the top, the Model A and the Model B had round bodies and loaded the reel in through a clamshell door. Now, the original Model A was made out of a material called Kodak Tenite, which was a type of cellulose acetate plastic derived from wood pulp. And although this was very cheap to manufacture and easy to injection mold, it suffered from a number of shortcomings. Mainly, it tended to distort and warp over time. Uh, it also, if improperly stored, decomposed, giving off a very strong vinegar odor, and being based on cellulose, was prone to developing surface mold. So you'll see throughout the production run of the Model A that the stiffening ribs on the surface increase in number and thickness in order to counteract this tendency to warp. Sawyer's even experimented with a composite material of sorts, producing the so-called speckled Model A. And those speckles are made with none other than asbestos. Though if you come across one, don't worry, they're not dangerous. The asbestos fibers are safely locked within the plastic. Now, in 1944, the Model A was replaced by the Model B, which is this one here, which is made out of the far more durable and stable synthetic thermoset plastic, Bakelite. So if we take a little bit of a closer look at the Model B, we'll see that although the shape is a little bit unfamiliar, it integrates all of the familiar features that would become standard in subsequent models of Viewmaster. We have our frosted windows at the front to diffuse the light coming in. We have our magnifying eyepieces at the rear, and we have our real advance lever at the top. The only basic difference, like I said, is the loading mechanism. So you just pull back this little brass tab here, and the whole thing hinges over. You can see the back of the advance lever here with its wire spring. And to load in the reel, you simply pop it onto the spindle, close up the clamshell, and then operate it like a regular Viewmaster. And we have a little window at the back here that shows you which photo is being displayed. And the basic size and design of Viewmaster reels really didn't change all that much over its entire production run. So this is able to take Viewmaster reels from pretty much any era. Now, these are manufactured in a number of different colors. The most common were black and dark brown, because those are the easiest colors to produce Bakelite in. Although there were rarer electric blue versions, as well as the rarest of all, the mix and match blue and black. And those are manufactured at the end of the production run, right before this is replaced by the Model C, when the factories are just trying to put together units from whatever colored parts they had left over. Though in every case, the eye cups were always molded in black. Now, there was also a British version, which was manufactured under license by Salford Electrical Instruments Limited. And these are distinguished by their larger, more dished eye cups. Also, the patent plate on the body is a little bit different between the British and American versions. Now, although these proved very popular with the public, the largest single buyer of Model A and Model B Viewmasters was the U.S. military, which purchased 100,000 of them during the Second World War, for use in training servicemen to identify ships and aircraft at long distances. And manufacture of the Model B continued until 1947 when it was replaced by the Model C, which introduced the iconic features of the square body and the top loading reel slot. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I thought it would be interesting to look at some of the prehistory of the Viewmaster. And I think it's interesting that Despite some unfamiliar styling, mechanically speaking, these early Viewmasters are identical to nearly all models that followed. They really got the design right on the first try. Anyway, I hope you enjoy these shorter form videos. Uh, again, please let me know in the comments. And until next time, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.